Can you take this text apart? And let me tell you, this is not my center text. When James encourages his hearer to count it joy, it was, it was, it was, it could be this way that it was a, a calculated thoughts for somebody to tell you to count something. It gotta be in a, in a form of calculation. One, two, three, four. Count it. Take your time and dismantle what James was trying to say to us. Count it. Calculated thoughts. We will never, and I think it's in finite, we will never get to the end of what James was saying to his ears and to us. But count it. Remember that or hold on to that. Count it. Our joy when you fall into diverse things. But by master reasoning, you will be taken from the book of Philippians. Paul writing to the Philippians, and I consider it having God. Anthem of the Christian church. Mm. Come on. Let me treat and then come back. I wish I could have coupled what happened in Caesarea, Philippi, mm. with Peter, with what I'm about to discuss now. But I had to separate them. And in the book of Philippians, chapter 3. You can get there and stay there with me. And I will start with divided into three sections. And section one, Paul opened up by warning. No, Paul is in prison yeah. in Rome, writing to the Philippians, yes, writing to the Philippians. Paul is in suffering. He's locked down, locked up in suffering. And he's now writing to the Philippians. And who were the Philippians? The Philippians were mostly Greek. And the Philippians were not new Christian converts. So here Paul is writing to them from verse 1 to 9. Paul systematically begin by warning the church, the new formed church in Philippi about those that could come in and cause problems. But Paul start to hit, start from hitting them from the outside of things. It's a beware, beware virgin. Finally, it's a beware. Beware of dogs and of evil workers. Beware. Beware of concision. Beware. It begin by from the outside telling, listen, be careful. But as Paul continues to write to the Philippian Christian, to the Greeks in Philippi, he gets somewhere. He was going somewhere. I love this chapter. If you want to fall in love with Philippians 3, go home and read it. Yeah. By the time he, he Paul is, is reading, by the time he gets to verse, let me see you now, verse 9, uh, verse 9, he brings it back from over the outside now to himself. Paul said this thing, verse 10, he begins by saying, that I may know him. Watch me. Paul now start the warning and begin to point this thing at himself. Yeah. And what he's saying, I think, is that I might I call him, I know him. But what he's also saying is that I think that's for today. Yeah. I call say, know him. Yes, sir. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Yes, and Paul knows it was imperative that he get to that relationship with Jesus Christ, that he might know him and everything about him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And become conformable, become acceptable of the death of Jesus Christ. Paul knew that although he was striving, he knew that something was still wrong with his spirituality. And I like when he get to verse 11, he says something that I think Martin Luther and Martin Luther, Malcolm X copy, and that I will entitle my sermon. By any means, Paul knew that something was wrong with him. Huh. And he said this, he said this too, by any means, Huh. I'm going to get it together. If you're sitting there today mm -hmm. and don't realize that you haven't attained mm -hmm. to that goal, something is wrong with you. Yeah. Because Paul, Paul knew from whence he came and he knew that he was going somewhere. And by any means, I'm going to attain to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Then he continued, verse 12, not as though I had already attained passage. Yes, sir. Either were already perfect passage, yes, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for, for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Yes, you see what happened to Christian people is that we walk about here thinking that we have apprehended, that we have apprehended, have apprehended yes. but we haven't got there yet. So then we look and pass a jail. And we see Pastor J. Paul. You see Pastor Dalton Paul. And you begin to knock me down. But remember, count it, you know. Roger. Count it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to finish this thing too quick, but get that in the Yes, sir. He gets to 30. He climbs. He said, brethren, yes. just like James opened up in 1 3. He said, brethren, he said, listen, listen, get close now, because I'm about to address some personal and some tough things I'm about to address. He said, brethren, the brethren that James writing, I know Paul is writing to another sister, brethren. He said, brethren, yes. do not count it. Not myself. Yes. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yes. I like when other preachers in the congregation. Yes. You say, I, I could not myself to have a friend. So when you think you are sitting and criticizing somebody, remember. Yes. Come on. You didn't get nowhere yet. Yes, sir. You haven't seen anything spiritual. You haven't even begun to live a spiritual life yet. But I consider myself not preaching. And if you apprehend it, I have to check it out. Let me check it out. The Greek help me with it. Now. He said, he said, take with the eyes, lay hold of. Paul said, I am not yet taken with my hands and lay hold of this righteousness 
this perfection that I need to. But I get to what? Yes, sir. The operation means any person or thing order to uh, order to use it. Any person or thing that you that that, that you that, that in order you take hold of it in order to use it, Pastor James. He has to take a fully take hold of the Holy Spirit yet. You have to fully take hold of Jesus Christ yet. For I have not yet apprehended the true power of God. I have not yet apprehended the true essence of God. I just had a glimpse of His glory. And I have not yet apprehended. I am still fighting. I get stretched out the principality of power. If you think Christian life is easy, try living it. Count it. What Paul is saying is Paul is saying in his first part of this text. Count it. Because you see, I'm not yet taking hold of what I need to take hold of. It's a stage. Stage one. Count it. Stage two. And if you're looking at me climbing up the ladder, and I get to stage five, and I'm not yet apprehending, and you see me saying something about me, or doing something, don't run, come back to Pastor James and tell it. Because I'm not yet apprehending. Yes, sir. When you get to stage six, I mm. might sleep a little bit, Pastor James. But, but, yes, I'm not yet operating. Yes. Stage seven, stage eight, but, but I'm still not yet operating. I will take, I take a whole little, but I have to fully. Apprehended. What you say by any means necessary, I'll get here. Yes. But you say while I'm counting, and while you're counting, count with me and pray for me. Don't criticize me. Because right. I'm not yet apprehended. Classical. This Christian anthem. Fill it up full dirty. And I hope you go home and take it in. Mm. And Paul, Paul continue as he writes to the Philippian Christian. And he says, but this one thing, yes. one, but this one thing is, you know, but a banish. Mm. But I'm not yet afraid. He said, but, but, yes. This one thing he knows. Come on. He, he, he is leaving those things behind. Yes, thank you, Jesus. The whole man mm. is leaving behind. Yes. The things he used to do. I'm fighting to leave behind. I'm not yet afraid of it. Mm. The places I used to go. I'm fighting to leave behind, but, but, but I'm not yet a friend there. But there's a force working with me, and I know by enemies necessary. Yes, Father. One thing I know for getting those things behind. And help Paul. Church, I'm encouraging you to help Paul. As you read this text and as you listen, forget people's faults and errors behind. Because we are not yet apprehended, Pastor Jesus. Yes, sir. Leave it here. Leave it here. Because you know what? Jesus leaves it here. That's right. 
Yeah. He didn't take it to the cross. He buried it. Mm. And rise the third day. I'm not yet apprehended, church. Forget. And also while forgetting, forgive Pastor James. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm not yet apprehended. But I keep fighting church. God, the old man is stubborn and he won't leave. Hmm. Hmm. Not yet apprehended. And as he says, to close out, reaching forth. It's good to bury some things yes. in the grave and some people and walk away. God, oh, there's a future that is a bright future that is set before you here like this. And when you look up, you see Jesus trying to lift lifted up. Yes, sir. And say, my son, just keep walking towards yes. me. Because there's something greater that you have left behind. The crown that is laid up for you. Greater. Yes. And the crown that is laid up out of what's the army angel this morning. Forgetting those things. Which are behind. But we have to get to that point. Age where we let go from our past. One. Let go from others' past. Two. Let go of the issues that might keep you back from apprehending. I call not myself apprehended. When I first ran into this text many years ago, I had to jump for joy. Because when you sit or when you think you are down in the pits of hell, Paul said you are not yet apprehended. You haven't yet reached perfection. But I know, I know that Jesus will fix it. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. It's a little song I'm going to sing that we're going to sing way back in the Sunday church when I was a little kid. Say, with Jesus, fix it for you. For we have not yet prayed. For he knows, Pastor Jesus, just what to do. Whenever you pray, let God have his way, for we have not yet apprehended. And he will fix it for you, for you Pastor. Amen. Praise God. God, somebody. Uh, don't know about you, but God is still working on me. Uh, much yet. Apprehended, um, fully grasped it, but God, uh, He's still working on me. Him not so that we can sing the closing song. If you know that God is still working on you, uh, I know He's still working on me. Help me to not to look at someone else's fault. Some will take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you. I think it's 329. Take it then wherever you go. Yes. Let me see if that I'm correct with that. Now look, think is take the name. Think is in the book. 329.
Choose 
to come. Help us to be full of faith. Waiting for you. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. Come on now. Let it rain.